Hi, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I went way down the research rabbit hole, an unexpected journey. I began this morning looking for uh, information about images that some of you have seen. If you're a Civil War collector, you're very familiar with the Jeff Davis and the South images, uh, which for those of you who don't know, are a relatively small group of portraits of Southern soldiers all posed with a placard. On that placard is written Jeff Davis and the South with an exclamation point. They are exceedingly rare images. There might be a couple dozen that are known to exist. I was doing some research on the topic and I found something completely unexpected, a book uh, about the uh, chronicling the Civil War. It was written about 1863 following Vicksburg, the surrender of Vicksburg. And it was published in 1864 by a minister from Memphis. He describes himself as an elderly man I haven't been able to find uh, his life dates, but his name is Alan M. Scott. And apparently he was a native of Tennessee. He was known, maybe had he not written this particular book, he would have been known and is known for a book called A New Southern Grammar of the English Language that was published in late 1861, just after the start of the war. The book he published in context appears to be part of a larger movement to document the Southern cultural identity fueled by the Civil War and the separation between the Southern states and the Northern states. There's been some mentions of Scott's book, this grammar book, in various scholarly works over the years, but not a lot of information on it beyond a mention. So after the publication of that book, he started dabbling in writing about the Civil War uh, in a scripture style following the King James Bible. And um, some of that work was published in a local newspaper. He received positive reviews and he continued to write in the style and he fleshed it out, adding more information uh, and in 1864, the book comes out. It's a fully published book that tells the chronicles, that chronicles the Civil War from 1861 through the surrender at Vicksburg. In the preface to the book, and I've included the link here below, so please go check it out. It's a fascinating volume. Uh, in the preface to the book, he asks and answers the question, why have they been written in scripture style? And he answers it by saying, because the style is quaint, unusual, and from its novelty, calculated to make a lasting impression on the mind. So I just can't resist reading a little bit of this to you. I find it fascinating. I did find uh, my reaction, one of fascination, uh, is tempered by what I read on a Civil War talk thread. Um, this book was discovered by someone on the thread and um, the reaction, if you read down through the thread, seems to be a mixture of folks who uh, took it as more of a comedic piece of work. It runs a range, a gamut of comedic to folks who found it um, uh, uh, not in good taste and a little bit uh, too serious and, um, uh, and not really a good reflection of a Bible um, passage, not a good use of that style. So uh, I'm going to let you or give you an opportunity to listen and you can make up your mind uh, what you think about it. The reading I'm going to do for you is uh, chapter... 107, Gettysburg, second day. So here it goes. This is a reading from Chronicles of the Great Rebellion by Alan M. Scott, a minister from Memphis, Tennessee. Here we go. 
Now, when the morning of the second day had fully come, all prepared themselves unto the battle, for strong were the foes that had met, and great was their courage and valor. But the day had well nigh passed, and in the evening was at hand when the rebels came forth to the conflict. Then marched forth long street and hill, mighty captains of the south, and they fled forth forty and five thousand of the bravest of the rebels. And they moved onward silent and steady, like unto a dark cloud when it moveth up the blue of the heavens. And they fell mightily upon the core of sickles and forced them back even as a mighty wind driveth a billow. And the noise of the conflict was terrible, and the smoke of the battle was as the burning of cities, and the ground was heaped with the dead and the wounded and dying. Now came Hancock and Sykes to the aid of the valiant sickles, and joined the power of their arms to the might of his valor. But on swept the host of the rebels, and the Northmen regained not their footing. Then came up the twelfth corps of Slocum and the sixth corps of Sedgwick, who had come rapidly from far that he might join battle also with the rebels. For Sedgwick had marched for thirty and six hours, and his soldiers were weary and would fain rest. But when they saw the tide of the battle and how danger threatened the army, they said, lead us on to the conflict. And they came down like a whirlwind and drove back the rebels, even to the spot whence they had come forth. Now the battle raged until late in the night, and the victory was to the army of Mede, for the rebels were sore beaten and repulsed at all points. So there you have it. It's chapter 107 from Chronicles of the War of the Rebellion by Alan M. Scott. Check out the link below if you want to give the, the book a read. Curious for you, your opinions on it. More research to be done. Until the next video, happy trails.